All right, it is 2 p.m. and we're back for our next session, which is onboarding Pepperdine's adjunct faculty to the Sakai LMS with our presenter, Adia King from Pepperdine. Um, Adia is a recent graduate of Pepperdine's Graduate School of Education and Psychology, having earned her MS in Learning Design and Technology with a background in creative writing, tech, and AI. She graduated from Wellesley College in 2018, where she pursued a pre-med program with a degree in English and creative writing. Post-graduation, she continued her educational pursuits in speech, speech pathology, ultimately leading her to a career in the tech industry. Adia has experience in developing synthesized speech technology and designing schemas for integrated phonetics into AI. In her current role, Adia joins Pepperdine University's TechLearn department as an instructional designer, collaborating with faculty to elevate course sites through engaging interactive elements, conducting workshops, and prioritizing accessibility. She is excited to leverage the skills she acquired during her graduate program to enhance the Pepperdine community. So with that, I will turn it over to Adia. Thank you so much, Wilma, for that introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here today. Uh, welcome to my presentation. My name is Adia King, and I'm here in my capacity as an instructional designer at Pepperdine. And I'll be presenting on our process for onboarding adjunct faculty to uh, Sakai's LMS. So why onboarding for adjuncts? Um, oftentimes, adjunct faculty are in a unique position because they are the only they're only affiliated with the institution in in a very limited capacity. So they might be unfamiliar with our specific tools or our resources. Um, even if they are familiar with our tools, they might be hesitant to reach out for help or unsure of specifically where to turn for assistance. So my department is really concerned with proactively supporting the adjuncts and ensuring that they feel prepared prepared and empowered to use Sakai effectively. So onboarding adjuncts effectively means aiming to improve the quality of their teaching. We want to make sure that teachers are well-versed in Sakai so that they can firstly develop better course materials. And when I say better, I mean richer, more accessible, more tailored towards their specific class objectives. Secondly, um, they are better prepared to engage students effectively and in more unique ways. Thirdly, we aim to help them evaluate student performance in a variety of different formats. So rather than leaning exclusively on exams, perhaps students can be evaluated in part via their discussions or as well as some sort of oral presentation. We aim to help faculty be more creative in their classes. Um, and as an aside, we do know that student satisfaction of knowing that a faculty is confident and competent in Sakai makes a difference to students. And lastly, if we're able to get all of these things right and incorporate all of these elements into the learning experience, it leads to improved student learning outcomes. So that's why we onboard um, faculty and that's why we make sure not to leave behind adjunct faculty in the onboarding process. So what do these steps actually look like? So we've developed a systematic process to identify new adjuncts each semester. First, we consult with the various department chairs to gather a list of new faculty members. So Pepperdine has about five different schools. There's different departments in each school and um, or for CBER for the undergrad. And we have to reach out to each of the departments so that they give us their various adjunct faculties for each semester. We then have the lists organized in a spreadsheet system so that each semester, the department chairs only need to update the spreadsheet with a new tab. And in the new tab, they can name it the new year and then update the new adjuncts specifically in that tab. So it makes it all really organized and neat and difficult to lose track of material. Then once I re received everyone's list, we make sure that the information is orga organized accurately by term and by department. This is a really important step in the process, combing through the material. Sometimes I identify that there are spelling errors that would have prevented me from emailing the right professor. Sometimes the wrong email is associated with the name. Sometimes there are duplicates or only personal emails available. So combing through the emails that we the list that we receive from the department chairs is a really important step to making sure that we're actually reaching the people we intend to reach. And finally, 
we initiate outreach to these adjuncts using a tool called Yam, um, which allows us to track engagement. For example, after sending the initial email, we check to see who's opened the email, who hasn't opened the email, and then we can send follow-ups as needed. When we do finally reach out to adjunct, adjunct faculty, we offer them three scheduled workshops. We stagger the times of the workshops so that one is in the morning, another is in the afternoon, and the last is towards the end of the day slash early evening. And these all, they don't all take place on one day. We offer them um, over a few days, but we make sure to offer one morning slot, one afternoon slot, and then one early evening slot so that um, we're making it accessible to the community. And in addition to these specific workshops that I host, we do offer unlimited one-on-one -on -one consultations um, for the whole semester. So um, in order to begin with the adjuncts, I begin with telling them what are the essential Sakai tools and features that I think they need to be familiar with. I provide a really brief overview of each tool and then I explain why it's important for their teaching. I start with a general overview of the site, uh, how it works, which buttons are important, which buttons we don't recommend clicking, et cetera. And then I begin with what I call the evaluation tools. So starting with the evaluation tools is a really essential step because these tools, um, assignments, tests and quizzes and gradebook really shape the course's foundation. So these are also the tools which I've noticed throughout the semester faculty bring the most questions about. Uh, when it comes to the assignment tool, I explain how to build an assignment, including things like setting due dates, um, making sure I, you give clear instructions, and then even the capability to include grading rubrics and how easy that makes it for grading. For the tests and quizzes tool, we demonstrate how to create various type of assessments, the, um, ranging from quizzes, exams, um, even surveys, uh, with a variety of options for question types. Um, we make sure to let them know that there's flexibility in setting time limits and customizable feedback. And then we make sure always that they know how to do accommodations for students. I even separately have hosted a presentation which is available to all faculty, demonstrating how to incorporate AI assisted feedback for multiple choice questions into Sakai in order to really maximize student learning and encourage information retention. So um, we love Sakai because it offers so much um, feedback to students and that feedback is a really important part of their learning experience. So we like to capitalize on what's available in Sakai and make sure always to let faculty know um, how to leave feedback to students and how to engage with students effectively. And lastly, for the gradebook tool, I explain how the gradebook automatically integrates grades from assignments and tests and quizzes. And then we provide faculty with um, a recommended workflow in order to capitalize on the affordances of Sakai's platform. So we don't only introduce them to the tools, we also give them recommended flows for how, how best to input the information and how to make this easiest for themselves. Next, um, I focus on the information tools. So, um, so syllabus, announcements, and resources, I refer to them as the information tools because they provide really structured access to course information. Um, I Firstly, I discuss the importance of a syllabus in general, how it gives students really important information about course expectations, um, grading policies, and keeps them informed about important deadlines. Then I explain how to use the announcements tool and the different affordances of the announcements tool, how faculty can utilize announcements to keep students informed about important updates, um, give them reminders and changes in the course. It's also a really easy way to notify students about any last minute changes that you might need to make to the class schedule um, or homework assignments. Sometimes you know life happens and things come up all the time. Sometimes you have to cancel class or um, you made a mistake on the homework assignment and you noticed last minute. So announcements are a really um, effective way to keep in communication with students and make sure that they're actually receiving uh, what you're sending out. And lastly, the resources tool is a really great tool because it's an important hub for all the class files and information. Uh, we make sure to let um, adjuncts know that all of the class files will appear here. Even if you upload the files to some other tool, 
um, they all populate within resources. So a lot of the times faculty don't know that and they're a little like frustrated with how you have to upload files to different locations and we are able to reassure them by letting them know that resources is a central hub, functions as a central hub for them so that anything that they upload to their class, they can access right there in resources. Last but certainly not least um, are the LTIs. We explore the benefits of using Zoom, Panopto, and H5P plugins and how easy they are to access within Sakai. We, um, we encourage faculty to leverage the advanced Zoom features um, and functionalities. Uh, we want them to learn how to create more customized session. And then we, of course, teach them how to integrate the Zoom Zoom into their calendar for easier scheduling because, of course, when we make things more accessible for people, they're more likely to use them. Um, we love Panopto because it allows faculty to make their lectures available to students. Um, we make sure that adjuncts know that you can, there are a lot of different capabilities within Panopto right within Sakai. You can insert knowledge checks. It has um, built-in engagement metrics such as viewing patterns and completion rates. And this data is really essential because it can inform um, some of the instructional adjustments that you make to your class. It can help you identify content areas that maybe the students are a little bit weaker on or areas that require a little bit more additional support. And lastly, for H5P, H5P is great for creating interactive content like timelines and uh, flashcards or video content. It's also really great for embedding activities directly into the course page, um, different multimedia elements. So a lot of the times teachers have ideas um, that they want to incorporate into their class, but they don't realize how easy it is to integrate them directly on Sakai. And so I, the point of introducing them to the LTIs is to let them know that they have a lot of flexibility and opportunities for creativity in their course, and they don't have to go to some other website to do it. They can do it right within Sakai and have things embedded into their course so that it's smooth and seamless experience for students. And we did earlier talk about personalized support and consultations, but I want to highlight it because the personalized support is actually a really big part of this, of this initiative. Um, we still have to make ourselves available for personal consultations and requests of the individual needs of faculty. Oftentimes, like I mentioned, adjuncts are coming to Pepperdine um, without any Sakai experience. Um, sometimes they're even more familiar with other LMSs, so they require a brand new education on Sakai. And on some level, they often require a little bit of emotional support. And so we build, um, so, and so we make time in our schedules to consult with them individually so that they're not just receiving general information about how to use it, but that we're actually addressing their specific needs. So I've had some consultations where, you know, I've built out full assignments with professors, um, where we've uploaded all the resources for the class, um, where we've organized the various assignments that they want to have for their class and the different release dates. And um, sometimes teachers already have built the things out themselves and they just want you to look over what they've done to see if you have, um, if you've noticed any errors or even if you have some new ideas about how you can improve the content. So the individual consultations are a really, really valuable component of the onboarding process. And so just as I talk about it, um, I want to re-emphasize that, um, that there's no substitute for personalization and individual um, attention. So this is a chart that I created with Gemini uh, within Google Sheets. We have a URL on our website, on our TechLearn website at Pepperdine, which directs faculty to the consultation request form. And since implementing the onboarding process for adjunct faculty in 2021, we've noticed a really significant decrease in general consultation requests. And so when I say general, that is faculty wanting a general overview of Sakai to understand how to use the site. Um, so I believe that the adjunct onboarding process that we've implemented at Pepperdine has contributed really significantly to this decline in requests because we found a way to be very proactive about meeting the various needs of our faculty. And of course, this data is, is 
uh, it doesn't include the various other ways that we allow faculty to reach out. Um, sometimes we run into faculty on campus and schedule time. Sometimes they reach out via email or via phone calls. But um, I wanted to include this chart because it presents a general story of how the volume of requests have um, decreased over time. And so it is reassuring to know that our efforts have been worthwhile and that um, throughout the year, if we are able to attend to faculty at the beginning of the year and when they're new, we do notice a little bit of a decline throughout the semester of um, how much they need support. And so this is definitely a really positive trend. And we, um, we've, been, we've seen lots of improvement um, with this process. So thank you. Are there any are there any questions? Anybody have any questions for Dia? I see that Jennifer commented in the in the chat that she she likes your um your your uh, onboarding program there. She's yeah. um, doing some similar adjunct training, but it's nowhere near as comprehensive. So that sounds like so. Um, I'm I'm really glad that you like it, Jennifer. I think that part of what helps is just letting the faculty know that there's some sort of regular time that they'll get to check in. So, I think that an hour overview and mixing with class is probably doing a lot to um, comfort them and make them feel more familiar with the site. I wonder if you get some smiles. Um, to respond to Charles, it varies. I think that people are always more comfortable with what they're more comfortable with. So learning something new uh, is stressful in and of itself. But um, th I think they find after we go through this really brief onboarding process that it's not as daunting as they imagine it to be. And I think they're eased, their nerves are actually eased. I was asking about after a few months. Um, I don't know, honestly, we don't check in that um, about like the comparison after a few months, but that would be interesting to know. And I, yes, I think the proactive reaching out to the adjuncts probably really helps. I think it's better to bother them than to make them feel abandoned. All right, any other questions or comments for Dia? I'd just like to say that that was an impressive graph. <laughs> There's a significant drop there in those exactly. requests. So that definitely shows that you guys are doing something right. Um, so yeah, and it, it does seem very organized and kind of a great way to introduce them to the different tools. So bravo. Thank you. And yes, Charles, I would totally Agree. Sakai is a really interesting LMS because it has like so many capabilities, but you have to have a faculty who has a willingness to explore these capabilities and um, who is looking for some sort of degree of customization. Otherwise, they could be very overwhelmed by all the options. But we like the customization. But thank you all so much. Thanks, Wilma. <laughs> Well, thank you for um, sharing this with us. Um, I think it's it's really valuable information to take back to um, our respective institutions. So thanks so much. And um, we're ending just a couple minutes early, but um, our next session starts at 2.30. So we have about 11 minutes um, before the um, birds of a feather with Christina about templates. So you'll get a chance to kind of um, you know, talk and ask questions, be a little more interactive. Um, and Christina is going to share some information about what they do with templates. Hopefully, um, all of you will be willing to also um, share things that you have done at your institutions. So I will see you guys back in about 10 minutes for Let's Talk Templates.